British artist Damien Hirst in his element. The pop star of the art scene, he's acclaimed, often controversial, and always the center of attention. Now he's exhibiting his works in Berlin, together with friend Michael Jew. The American is also an artist, just not quite so well known. The two men first met at an art fair in Cologne 19 years ago. We had booths side by side, and we had a thin wall in between, and I was hammering up a piece which was some sausages in formaldehyde, and he had I urine had cakes. I had pounds of urine blocks that you You know, the blocks in the, in the toilet that you urinate on. He had a sculpture which was those pink. It smelled and then, awful, yeah. And he was trying to hammer that on the wall, and I was hammering on the other side, and the wall was wobbling. And we were like, hey, who are you? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> You're ruining my art. So, uh. It's since become the stuff of legend. Medicine cabinets filled with pills and canvases studded with blades. Beautiful and horrifying, Hearst loves to shock. Flies, dead or alive, are the symbol of perpetual decay. His works are intentionally repulsive. Michael Jew has made a name for himself, but his work and Hearst's bear striking similarities. Jew dissects, saws apart, and reassembles. His is a clinical approach to art. Jew's improved rack, a sculpture of elk antlers, and Hearst's the black sheep with the golden horns, complement each other. So who is actually influencing whom here? We started with the zebras, because we both did zebras. Actually, I stole his idea of a zebra. <laughs> Bronze on the inside, pink on the outside. This is Michael Jew's trash version of a zebra. By contrast, Hearst's dead one appears remarkably alive. Formaldehyde made Hearst's career. He first gained notoriety in 1991 by exhibiting a pickled shark. Now Hearst's very name has brand status. His biggest coup was For the Love of God, a diamond-encrusted skull that sold for a cool 74 million euros. Back in Berlin, Hearst lived a relatively modest life here in the early 1990s when he had a scholarship from the German Academic Exchange Service. I think when I was paid for doing that, it's like, I can't remember, it was 500 pounds a week, that was a lot of money. <laughs> Nobody else was offering me that kind of money. You know, and they pay for an exhibition and a book and they give you German lessons. Mine were terrible. And Berlin was kind of down, you know, it's like, because the, the Potsdamer Platz was this kind of big, it was, it was up because that was going to be the saviour and then it kind of all went like that and it was a bit flat and people got a bit depressed. It seems back up again in a good way. Hearst has always had an impeccable sense of timing. In 2008, he auctioned off 200 of his works. On the same day, Lehman Brothers' bankruptcy sparked the global financial crisis. And since then, has he been affected by the economic downturn? Even in this kind of climate, I mean, I think, you know, for artists like Mike, for artists like myself, you know, we're all still selling, you know. I mean, Mike's making sales, I'm making sales, not on the scale we were at, and there's been price adjustments, you know, but, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I get a phone call from the gallery now every time I sell a drawing. They go, we've sold a drawing! Some things never change. Hearst is as charismatic and provocative as ever. The brand Damien Hearst is bound to survive any crisis.